Welcome back to Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm really glad to have with me once again Jim Payne. He's the president and CEO of Dynasert. It is a sponsor to our company. It's a company that I've recommended in my newsletter. It's a company that I own shares of personally uh, because I find it a very exciting prospect and a company that trades in Toronto under the symbol DYA, in the United States under the symbol DYFSF, uh, currently trading in Canadian money at 78 cents. Uh, and in U.S. money around 58 or 60 cents, somewhere in that range. Uh, 230 million shares outstanding, uh, giving it a market cap of around, uh, in U.S. money, about $135 million. Dinosert has employed uh, rocket scientists uh, to generate a technology that's allowed, uh, enables their, their, their technology to reduce the fuel consumption for internal combustion engines and also reduces uh, carbon emissions and uh, greenhouse gases very dramatically as well. Uh, and uh, it's all very, very good. Uh, the company seems to be doing well. Uh, so we're really glad to have Jim with me. Thanks for joining me again, Jim. Thank you, Jay. You know, um, we always have new listeners on this show. So maybe just briefly give an overview of the, the two markets that you're focused on right now. Uh, and uh, give us an idea of the size of those markets, Jim. Okay, well, uh, Jay, our product is a hydrogen. Our hydrogen, it's, it's our on-demand electrolysis unit that's designed for internal combustion engines. It supplies the air intake with hydrogen and oxygen gases separated. It uh, results showing increased fuel economy, increased torque, extending oil life, and a reduction in emissions. Uh, with our patented smart ECU controller, our hydrogen unit proactively injects these pure gases into the engine's air intake stream by mixed uh, with mixing with the diesel fuel, increasing the amount of energy produced by the engine with each R, uh, R, RPM. Mm-hmm. This has recently been validated through both on-road and accredited third-party testing. The hydrogen produces hydrogen and oxygen results in up to 19.2% reduction in fuel consumption, up to 40% emission reductions of greenhouse gases, and better than 65% reduction in particulate matter. Mm. Uh, we've initially we were, we are targeting the class eight trucks or the you know the large tractor trailers that are or the large tractors pulling the trailers around the country. Uh, that's a that's a huge market. I know that uh, you know, there's over 15 million trucks in, in just in the U S. But uh, out of that, there's about two and a half million of those are the class eight trucks. But something that we were uh, you know introduced to just recently by a. Uh, by one of the Canadian giants here. It's a household name in Canada. They're a major grocery chain, and they've been uh, started outfitting their fleet uh, with their units on their trucks, but then they introduced us to the reefer market, and this is something that I had never, ever even thought of taking a look at. And the reefer market is actually the re- refrigerated trailers that they pull around the country and the refrigerated containers that you see on ships and on trains and this market is actually three and a half times larger than the truck market. Oh. I never knew that each and every one of these have a four-cylinder diesel engine inside them that runs 24-7, uh, you know, producing, uh, to, to produce the refrigeration. It's a huge market. So, like I said, they introduced us to it. Uh, we have since very quickly had our engineering team design. The engineering is done for it. The prototype is done. And uh, we're expected to go to the market with this which we call our HG2. It's, it's our, second, uh, our second unit, and it'll be, we're expecting to go to the market the third quarter of this year with that. So uh, okay. we have just recently gone to market with our, with our HG1, that is for the Class 8 trucks. Uh, we announced just a couple of weeks ago our first sale of just, uh, just shy of $2 million, but uh, uh, these sales are increasing rapidly. Uh, we have already you know, shipping units, and uh, quite honestly, we're getting results reported back that by far exceeded our expectations. So we're quite excited about the, about the market and how things are moving. Well, that's, that is uh, certainly exciting, and, and as I like to say, the proof will be in the pudding when we start seeing the numbers reported through your uh, quarterly statements, Jim. But I, I, I would like to ask you a little bit about the economics of these units for, let's say, starting with your Class A trucks, uh, how expensive are these units for the truck driver? How soon might they get a return on their investment in terms of savings of fuel? Uh, I, I don't know about the carbon tax issues, but just, just on the basis of fuel savings, 
Uh, what are your expectations there? If it, 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 I, I guess what I'm trying to understand is the economics per truck. Well, on on the class eight trucks, on uh, their their expectations are that they're actually looking at a payback on a long hauler. It's it's like seven to ten months, but uh-huh. on any truck, you know, their payback is is typically less than a year just on the fuel savings. Now you take into account, you know, the uh, you know the increased power, the increased torque, the extended engine life, and the extended life of the engine oil. I mean, there's so many additional you know, add-ons that it's hard to actually put a number to. Mm-hmm. Actually, one of the larger fleets that has recently been putting our units on, they've reported back to us, uh, death fluid. This is the diesel exhaust fluid that every truck in North America has to put in. Uh, their truck is actually running with 40% less death fluid uh, because of the because of the emissions improvement because it's oh. you're on a truck that's telling it how much death fluid so yeah, that in itself and, and they started you know just telling us the numbers on that and uh, and that again I mean that increases the payback or certainly ex- expediates the payback very significantly. All right, why would I mean I'd like to ask why would trucking firms not use this and is, is there any competition out there, Jim, that might that might make uh, people go, you know, make truck drivers, make trucking firms go somewhere else? Well, I, I'm certainly not going to pretend that there's no competition out there. I'm sure that there is uh, companies out there, you know, that have been trying to take different hydrogen units to the market for several years. But I would dare say the one thing that separates us from anything, it is our smart ECU. Our smart ECU, this is patent pending technology. This is This is the brain behind our technology. And we were certainly fortunate to bring on a gentleman to our team a couple of years ago, and he has been focused on developing this and getting the patents on this. But this in itself, what this does is it, it determines the flow rates of gases. One thing we learned over the years, I mean, you can't just set, you know, put something on and expect it to, to just keep, you know, continuously hitting that sweet spot because there uh-huh. is thousands of different you know conditions whether it's weather whether it's it's altitude whether it's the size of the load the torque uh, I mean it just goes on and on and on where now our unit actually it's a smart it's just like a smartphone this thing is learning mm-hmm. all the time and learning you know what the flow rates are required to to get the maximum burn I see and I think it also provides the data feedback uh, that uh, that provides information to the truck drivers and uh, I think you can also keep track of the uh, uh, of the environmental issues as well, the the carbon emissions and so forth. Is that right? You're absolutely right, and that's you know that is certainly you know an added feature. I mean, it's it's like a fleet management system, but it's like a fleet management system plus plus. It does it it measures the fuel savings, it measures the reduction in emissions, and then it converts it to carbon credits. Carbon credits right now, it's still. You know, and unknown just how this is going to play out in North America, but I know certainly in the Canadian market, the Canadian government is taking a very strong stand towards this. You look in the European market, I mean, carbon credits are a commodity that's traded on the stock market. So oh. that, again, will be a huge added feature. Yeah, I mean, it's something I would imagine then people are going to, uh, an added reason why they must have one of these units in order to uh, uh, to keep track of that sort of thing if the government's put that uh, put that into law. Uh, Jim, I know that you have uh, some sales targets for this calendar year. Uh, you've talked to me about them. Uh, are you free to share those with us for Class A trucks? And then, as you mentioned, your refrigeration truck uh, units are coming into play, you expect, in the third quarter. Can you talk to us a little bit about what your, uh, what your targets are this year for sales for the company? Absolutely. Uh, actually, as you know, our EGM is actually coming up just on Friday, so We've sat with the entire team and we've put together a projection model for this year and we have gone to great extents to try and keep this thing very conservative and kept stepping it down and stepping it down because the numbers get very staggering. But uh, so our expectation in the trucking market, uh, you know, by the, in the second quarter of this year that we will, uh, in North America, we'll be selling 3,000 units. Uh, third quarter is 6,000 units and the fourth quarter is 12,000 units. And then we look at the the other market, the reefer market or the H2 market. Uh, our expectations are in the third quarter of this year that we put 1,200 in, out in the market and 3,000 in the fourth quarter. 
So if you add all those up, just that wholesale, I mean, that, that equates to just, just shy of $180 million in sales this year. So wow. going from just, just starting sales, you know, within the last month, uh, you know, this is quite a, quite a significant run. Uh, but like I said, you know, we've really tried to be very conservative you know, and very realistic with this. So you will be looking at uh, a very small percentage of the market if you attain those levels of sales this year, I suppose. And also, Jim, you talked to me about a 60% gross margin. Is that still in your thinking for both those products? It is. Okay. Well, that's, I mean, people can do the math. It's pretty staggering. If you're able to hit those numbers, I can't imagine uh, this isn't a stock that's going to rise very dramatically. With just a couple of minutes left, Jim, you've talked about the other applications and some of these uh, the refi you mentioned is three times bigger, I think you said, than trucks. But you also are looking at ships and trains, uh, remote locations for diesel fuel, uh, fuel power plants, and that so forth. Um, just, just, mom, just uh, briefly, tell us what the size of those markets are relative to the uh, to the truck markets. Well, they're they're certainly not as large numbers as the truck markets, but certainly they are. They are ten times greater in the in the dollar market, uh, you know, and and also for the payback for the for the fleets and everything. Now, this is mm-hmm. something that we are definitely working towards is going into the into the shipping rail and power generation. Uh, now, the smaller average size power generation, we're actually penetrating that now. We will actually be announcing something very shortly concerning that. But uh, but with the shipping and the rail. It is uh, it is something that's going to take a little longer. We're not expecting to get that to the market till early next year. Um, but when we you know when we penetrate the market with something like that, I mean you get into the huge power generators. I mean like a unit like that is a half million dollar unit, as opposed to something in the trucking world that's like short of ten thousand dollar unit. Yeah, um, Jim. What um, I know you have some really good management personnel around you as well. Uh, David Bridge, your chief operating officer, Gonzalo Lobby, uh, products development. Could you talk to us just briefly with with one minute left uh, about your management team? Because it's not just about you. You have some really good technical people uh, that you're building this company around in the manual. You're manufacturing these units. You're selling them and so forth. Just just mention to us briefly, if you would, please. Well, we have certainly, you know, over the last couple of years, really strengthened our team and, and even in the last year, and we will be introducing some additional people to our team at the AGM this Friday. But, uh, uh, you know, from from the management side, you know, you're right. I mean, you know, David Bridge you know, brings a wealth of knowledge in the, in the technology side or in the technical side. Uh, I mean, he came from, he was one of the original developers from Virgin Mobile and then with RIM, and uh, then we... Uh, Managed to get it. First of all, he came over as a consultant to the company. He fell in love with the company and and has came on full time. We have now got another gentleman, uh, you know, that is uh, very very highly recognized in the engineering uh, world. That is uh, taking a very strong and full time active role within the company. Uh, and then our board. I mean, we've really strengthened our board. Uh, Jean Pierre Collins is a gentleman that. Uh, uh, just joined our board recently. He's the newest one on our board. He comes from the from the uh, investment banking world. You know, years of experience there. Uh, he, he's actually going to be presenting this Friday. Uh, then we have just recently brought on a new CFO and a new director in finance. I mean, both these gentlemen, the CFO, has over 30 years' experience in the public world and working with large, large companies. Uh, and then our, our new director of finance has over 20 years experience actually worked with Fortune 500 manufacturing in the uh, in the automotive world so our team has continually strengthened uh, and then obviously I mean you know within the manufacturing side I think we've hired an additional 30 people on staff like I walk through the place now and the place is uh, you know there's a lot of people a lot of people working hard I don't know any of them by name but uh, but it's certainly encouraging to see this all happening well, it certainly is. I've been following your company now for a few years, and uh, to see it come to fruition is is very exciting. And and I would imagine with a company that that has prospects for 180 million of sales this year, you do have to have a management team. You can't just it can't just be you alone, Jim, and you and a couple of other people. Well, I want to thank you very much for being with us. I guess people should keep their eyes on news coming out of your AGM this Friday, and uh, for drivers that might really take this stock to much higher levels this year, eh? 
Absolutely. And your website, so people can go and learn more, is at dinosert.com? That is correct. Uh, all right. Very good. Very good. 